YouTube. This is SEL0320 representing JVS on Star Wars Week, y'all. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm supposed to be actually watching Empire Strikes Back. I got through about 75% of it, and all of a sudden I remembered Supergirl mid-season finale tonight because they got the um, they got the full season upload, so they're getting 20 uh, episodes total. But tonight's episode was this the mid-season fall finale. The name of this episode was Hostile Takeover. I'm going to go ahead and express to y'all my thoughts of this. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, this is going to be spoilers throughout most of this, so just keep that in mind. Um, I actually really liked this episode. It addressed all the different things that were in the air. Um, from what's going on in Kari emotionally, This it, it hits a whole nother level. Uh, something that she didn't comprehend or understand. Uh, specifically with the Laura and um, oh my gosh, what's the other person's name? Um, what is her aunt's name? How did I forget her aunt's name that quickly? Oh gosh, I forgot her aunt's name. Anyway, um, and her aunt. Um, the situation was going on with Wynn, Jimmy, and her. The love triangle. Like, what? Where are Jimmy's feelings towards it, and where are Cars' feelings towards it, and where is Wynn? Those all get addressed in this episode, as well as some awesome fight sequences actually. Um, there's one part towards the end that gets a little cheesy, but I'll go ahead into it. So the beginning of the episode kind of starts off with like Kara like on a mission to really try to stop her um, her aunt. And in doing so, like she she kind of like engaged her um, because they had kind of tried to capture her and she was kind of going and getting at it. And uh, she barely got away by kind of jumping off um, but then, like, her sister Alice was trying to keep her in training and stuff like that. And, like, look, you need to get prepared because anything could happen. And Kara's almost like she was trying to prove something to herself. And then you find out with these flashback sequences, she's holding on to a love and a life that she had with her aunt. And that what, that's just what is messing her up emotionally because this is kind of technically her last bit of family other than, you know, Kal-El. And um, I like the fact that they showed some seriously emotional sequences with the aunt, as well as the prospect of what's going on with Krypton, what her ideals were. Um, and then it was like, Kara only got one set of it because there's a bout that happens with Aunt and Kara the second time. And it's actually a lot more fierce at first because like they were going through buildings like, I mean, take the situation that was going on with Man of Steel, even though Clark had that up in that, in that movie, he was the first, that was his first time actually using his powers, period. Like, he was brand new. And Kara's kind of, like, getting there. Uh, but she at least had a lot more experience either way. But it was like, they were going through buildings. Like, Kara would try to take care of her mess. She would kind of stop her. And it was like, it was a really good fight. It was really engaging. And then Kara got to the very end. And it was funny because Alex had told her, she was like, you need to be knowing that you're going to have to be willing to kill her. And it kept on going back to that flashback sequence. Says she she's about to hit her. And she looked into her aunt's eyes and she just couldn't do it. She just could do it. Even like a lot of things with the comic book, like Supergirl and Superman are totally different. Like in a lot of different ways. Like there are things that Supergirl will do that Superman will not, just because of the prospect of who he is. And this kind of showcased it because Carl was ready. She was technically ready. It was just she got reminded of something, you know. Um, but then when she actually gets captured, this to me might have been one of the best sequences, even over the sequence when she killed uh, or blew up uh, the red tornado out of emotion, out of anger, because like basically her aunt told her, like, yeah, you don't understand the whole story. Like, your mom used, me, used you to catch me and put me in the Phantom Zone to be stuck there. And on top of that, like, it was like, yeah, we had the trade of arms and stuff like that, but like, you don't know the whole story. And like, Kyra went immediately to the AI system and asked it, like, did you know that this was going to happen? Did you know that Krypton was going to explode? And, like, you basically used me. And, like, the AI was kind of, like, talking nonchalantly. And, like, oh, my gosh, Melissa did some serious acting because she was getting enraged. She was getting emotional. And it was like, wow. Like, as a matter of fact, she even got so flustered. Like, she allowed her heat vision just to come out. And I was like, dang. Now, that was that was a powerful sequence. I really appreciated it. I really liked it. Um, definitely one of the best sequences so far this season. Um, then the situation that happened with Cat Grant. 
Now, this totally brought me by surprise. I knew it was going to eventually happen. I told Joe, I was like, this is going to happen eventually. But Cat Grant gets put in a situation where she gets hacked. And the guys, like Jimmy, Wynn, Carol, they're trying to find out what's going on. They're trying to dig through emails, trying to figure out what is they going to put on the surface level of stuff that's going to happen. And um, you find out it was like somebody on the overhead and he was trying to take Cat's job. And it was it was really interesting. I love when Cat and <laughs> Kara have communication because like they really do compliment each other. Even though Cat is a jerk, and she's always like, like <laughs> she's really they really compliment each other. They really help each other. Uh, specifically, what Cat elevates to Kara because just hearing the dialogue when she was talking about all her dirty secrets, specifically about her uh, her son, um, her illegitimate son. Um, I thought that was a really powerful sequence, um, but the thing that topped it was, I mean, after they won the, the situation and, you know, Kara had kind of almost spilled the beans on how she found out, like, what was that specific message that they needed to find. It was like, Kat, it all hit, it was almost like Lois Lane, like, finding out about Superman. And, like, she was sitting there going through the dissections of it and saying that she appreciated her and she cared about her, but... I know who you are, basically, in, in, in layman's terms. And it was like, she was trying to tell her, like, can you take your glasses off, please? She's like, no, I can't see without it. It was, it's, it's so interesting to, to see Kara naked. It was like, I mean, we, we've seen when she's Supergirl, we've seen when she's Kara, but we've never seen that transition in between when somebody's just uncovering it. Like, she's kind of usually just told people. And this one is something that could hurt, make or break the relationship with her or Kat in the long term. Um, but it might add to a whole nother level that I think that is already evident in my opinion that she's making her be the best Supergirl that she can be anyway. And I think that Kara knows that or else she would have just kind of like, you know, ducked it out. But I mean, she really kind of cornered in the situation and then she took the glasses off and she's like, it's finally nice to meet you officially. Thank you. You know, I was like, this is awesome. But then... You find out that the, the whole situation about the aunt uh, basically getting captured and Kara almost killing her and knocking her out supposedly quote unquote um, was all a smoke screen. That Nan, her husband, he really was trying to infiltrate uh, Maxwell Lord's location and it was like after that it was all turmoil. Like the cinematography and even like the choreographed fight sequences between the different villains I was like man this is just as good if not better as a cross of Arrow and Flash as far as elements with you know like um, the people that have powers in Flash and versus like the fight sequences that are going on in Arrow this was a perfect blend with this and every time I kind of see Supergirl more and more I can see that there'd be a crossover I think it would be really awesome if they ever did that uh, but either way like now I'm just kind of putting in work the only time that I thought it was cheesy throughout the whole episode is when all these guys just kind of compacted over him he was like Bleh! I was like Come on, man. Like, that's just cheesy. Like, it really was just really cheesy. I mean, I would have, like, preferred him to just break somebody's arm or throw and sling him outside. Uh, but it, it, was, it was an interesting fight. And it ended with them about to, you know, square off. And it, it's, it's going to be interesting. But that was a good mid-season finale. I definitely give it a good rating of 8.5. It's between 8.5 and a 9 out of 10. I don't know where I'm at with it. I can't gauge it because I haven't seen Supergirl in such a long time. But hopefully you enjoyed this review. Uh, leave your comments in the description bar below what you thought about the episode. And uh, I'll see y'all come January. It's Star Wars week though. It's time to look at Empire Strikes Back. Later everybody. JVS, we out. Keep it locked.